Okay, so I have been designing things to hold masks off of uh, people's ears, or the elastics off people's ears, and I had requests for button versions. Um, so I went ahead and actually designed 3D printed buttons that will go over the um, chaining so that I can just work it on as I go instead of having to attach it later. And that's what this design is. Um, for people don't who haven't understood how these are working, you could just use it on the back of your head and put the elastic over the buttons as is. This is about nine inches, which is the distance behind my head, almost ear to ear. Or you can also use it to size, the, size it down, like if your mask is too loose, if it's on your ears, um, by Put the elastic of the uh, of the mask on here, and then button, just secure it. And this design has buttonholes throughout across it. There's two stitches, and then a buttonhole the whole way across. And the, that's the same with the tie-on one, except for you have to put this. Through, put the loop that I, that I leave through and then thread the whole thing through and it'll hold the mask strap on that side and then tie the other end on. And those are so much easier for me because I don't need to have extra supplies, just the crochet hook and yarn. So I do like making those more. I don't like making these as much, but I'm doing them because that's what people are telling me they need. Um, so I'm going to make another one of these start to finish. Ah, I have my little, my little cup with my squirrels on it here. Um, I have the buttons. It actually, I find it helps to have two crochet hooks. This is the thicker one that I'm actually working with. And this thinner one can actually go through the hole. You really don't need a lot of yarn. This is more than enough yarn to make, uh, to make one of these. It might be almost enough to make two. I'm not sure. Um, this is again the the sugar and cream 100% cotton yarn, and then here's two other buttons that I've made using the cup to keep my yarn from rolling all over the place. Um, and so you can see I'm making this to the STL file available for this. It'll be on Tink uh, not Tinkercad, Thingiverse. I use Tinkercad to design it. It's really simple. It has a, uh, this is my version two. It's got a rounded edge, so it comes off the 3D printer easier. So this is my smaller crochet hook. And as you can see, it can go through there, which makes it easier to get the, the yarn through. I can, I can do it with my fingers without having to do, um, oh, there's a little bit from when I was cleaning off that yarn. Um, I can do it without that. I can get the I can get it on there, but it just makes it a little bit easier and a little bit less fumbling. Um, these are some of my fo favorite crochet hooks to work with. I can't remember what the what the woods are on these. These were gift from my children for Christmas. Um, I refer to them as my magic wands. They are made by Mr. Schmidt at turn dash of dash the dash century dot com. Um, and I first came across him when I, at a art festival and I bought one of his hooks and I made layouts for my younger children with them and I really love working with them. The little extra width here makes them a lot more comfortable for my hands to use for extended periods. So they're wonderful, lovely to work with, but you can just use the standard metal ones that you can get at pretty much any place that sells yarn and crochet hooks if you prefer. Um, if you're new to crochet, I do strongly recommend, you see how it's a straight line base, almost there, from here. This, this part's pretty much flat and straight, so this would roll off a table easily, um, as opposed to the ones that stick out more. I have some mild fine motor issues, and I find that this is so much less annoying to use. Um, and astute observers might notice that I am using black buttons with yellow yarn and yes we are Harry Potter fans I am intentionally making this a Hufflepuff thing one of my 
friends that's making masks is one of my favorite Hufflepuffs. I happen to be Ravenclaw. Um, and one of my children is a Hufflepuff, so I'm making these. So anyway, like I was saying, you can just... This is really... I, I, I'm watching my hands through my tablet screen that's strapped to my chest, so it's extra challenging to do this. So you can just force the yarn through, but especially since I knew I'd be doing this through a tablet screen, that's why I made sure to grab this. So this also means I don't have to go find one of my um my darning needles later or you know to do all this. If I was attaching the buttons later I'd have to use a darning needle to get them on and those are constantly wandering off in my house. So I'm putting both buttons onto the yarn before I start working. <laughs> my children are coming up into the room. You'll probably hear them in the background every once in a while. You may also hear a rumbly sound in the background and that's the printer making more buttons. If you can't find any other way to do this and you can't find any buttons that you can do this with, you can contact me and I could make buttons to send, but I have no idea how much I would charge for them. Um, it takes the printer about an hour to do 14 of them. So for seven masks, and I can't really think of what a reasonable price would be for that because it's time that the printer's not doing other things that we might need it to do. Um, cause I'm also use, using the printer to make bias tape makers so that people that can't crochet can be doing these with more standard buttons. Okay, so now start. So make your slip knot like you're just starting any other crochet project. And tighten it onto your hook. Oh, I just realized I have my thinner one. I want the thicker one. Um, and chain two, and then single crochet into the first, or not single crochet, sorry, double, half double crochet into the first one. And I am pinching the base here. I've got it all pulled really tight and tense. And then I'm pinching with my thumb and middle finger as I pull the yarn through to leave a loop there. Now I'm going to chain five. Two, three, four, five. And pull loop because now I'm going to put the first button on. That's why I didn't send them all too far back. One thing that I really dislike about making these is I have to stop and cut them off. Cut off the, uh, every time I finish one, I have to cut it off instead of just leaving it daisy chained on starting the next one because it's really, really annoying to have more than two buttons on the yarn at any time. It's sliding them. It's also why this design, I am getting that button on, the first button on as soon as I can before I go far enough that it uh, seems like it'll get annoying to, or I'm, I want, I'm trying to balance out not having it so close to the end that it's likely to get pulled off while also not having to deal with two buttons to try and slide down the yarn for too long. It's really breaks the flow of the work to be doing that. Okay, so put my smaller hook aside after getting them on there. And I'm already going to turn and be going the other way. If you saw my tutorial on making these with no buttons that are tie on, then you'll know some of what's coming next because I am going to be half double crocheting into the air basically by working into the bottom of each stitch. But first I'm going to do two half double crochets into those two, basically those two starting half double crochets there. Yeah. 
So that's the first half double. I'm so used to pinching the base of it that I was pinching the base of it more than I needed to. Oh, oopsies. That's right, I wanted to pull the yarn tail through just to give it a place to be tidy and not have to tidy that up later, so. I'm pulling the yarn tail through here so then I don't have to work it through later when I'm done with the piece. Okay, so now I'm doing the half double. <laughs> Sorry about that. And then this one. And like the one I did over here, I'm going to pinch the base of it. Get it all nice and snug. And then pinching right here where I'm grabbing the yarn to pull through. So I've got the loop there. And then I'm going to work the next half double into that little loop I left, which is the base of the stitch. So now I've got those there. And I work 30 total on each side. So, see, and there's that button creeping up on me. With it just being one, sometimes I can, if I can get it under my pinky, it'll stay there. But I lose count so bad. See, they're just creeping up on me again. Do, do, do. Usually when I'm doing this, I'd be listening to an audiobook. Oh, and that reminds me, I was thinking of putting in a little plug for a author that I've really been enjoying. Um, this is not paid or anything. This is just I really enjoy the work. Um, one that I like to listen to while I'm crocheting is Rachel Aaron. Um, A-A-R-O-N is the last name. And her series D DFZ, the main character kind of wears PPE of a sort of a uh, magical techno mage type thing. Um, and the fantasy level in that is kind of similar to Harry Potter. It's very funny. Um, I laugh out loud quite frequently when I'm listening to those to her books. Um, and the last of that trilogy is coming out on May 5th. So if I'm not listening to nonfiction or to the books that I'm listening to with my kids, that's what I'm listening to while I'm making these. Um, my teen and tween and I have been listening to while they're tidying house and I'm working on these since... They don't know how to crochet. Um, we've been listening to Super Powers by Drew Hayes. Right? Yeah. Wait. Yeah, it's Drew. <laughs> I get It's the same last name as Chris Hayes on MSNBC, and so sometimes I mix up the first name and I'll say the wrong one. That's also a very funny book. It's borderline appropriate for my almost 13-year-old. Um, definitely don't want that one playing on the speakers when any of my younger children are around <coughs> and that was my my tween sneezing in the background um but super powers has a lot of swears in it and somebody described it and i completely agree super powers is like harry potter but with superheroes instead of wizards and at college instead of middle and high school and so they're, they're being very 
much the uh, young adult college student type behaviors, but the characterizations are really, really good. Um, Rachel Aaron's books, the DFC is a spinoff of Heart Strikers series, which is five books, um, which I also very much enjoy and my children really, really enjoy. My older ones, those ones I'm actually okay with my, my nine-year-old coming in the room. Um, there's some, the steamy bits, there's like one steamy bit every other book, maybe, if that, so it's not even, I mean, it, there's nothing more steamy on that than they'd see if they came in when I was watching primetime broadcast television. Um, it's def ni neither of these books are like Game of Thrones or anything like that, so, or neither of the series. So, um, my 12 year old is also a very big fan of Drew Hayes's Fred the Vampire Count series, which is fitting since my 12 year old wants to be a forensic accountant. It's okay. I have, I've lost count of how many stitches I've done. So those are really great books. If you're looking for something to listen to while you're making these, once you've got the basics down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Okay. Five and it's stuck. Twenty six. I think it's not exact um, if you go too fa too many or too few it's not a big deal um, it'll you'll figure it out it just you know the last hole will either be a little bit bigger or there'll be a little bit more before the button like a stitch or two it's not a big deal all right so this is the opposite end this is about nine inches and now I'm going to chain five again, like I did the other side. One, two, three, four, five. And switch hook to be able to get in there. See, I made that hole just the right size to have the chain go through. It's five millimeters, if anybody's wondering. Those holes are five millimeters. Outer diameter is 20 millimeters. Um, and it's three millimeters thick. And I just made it from some shapes in Tinkercad. Did not take long to design at all. That you can, oh, and you can see on the side now, you can see it's kind of curved. That just makes it, the, the curved edge makes it a little easier to get off the printer. The first batch is, this, the white one has version one, which it's, you can see that's a sharper angle, and it was just hard to pry it off the print bed. So, I revised the uh, design to make it easier to pop them off. All right, so now we are ready to head back in the other direction on this. So I'm going to start by going into that last stitch with 
a double crochet, or a half double. I mean, you could be doing, you, you could be doing um, double crochets if you really want to. I just felt that that was making it thicker and using more yarn than needed. I felt that this was a pretty good width for these. Um, I did do some with single crochet for, with a variegated yarn because I just thought that looked better. So that was a standard half double. Might have gone to the wrong stitch, but eh, no biggie. And now I'm going to do the pinching thing again because I'm about to go into the air to make the first buttonhole. So I've got all that. I've got it nice and tight. A ten with my finger. I'm pinching with my thumb and middle finger here. So I still got the loop there. So this is the loop from the other row. This is the loop I just made. Going into the loop I just made. And I'm making I'm holding it, pinching it again. One in the air. And two in the air. Still pinching this. I'm going to go into the base of this one, but then before pulling through, go, skip two, go into the base of that one, and then basically stitching them together when I pull the yarn through, and then I make my half double. You don't really have to pinch this one because you do want it to be snug to hold those two together like that. So there's the buttonhole. There's the first buttonhole there. And yeah, it is functional because you can totally fold it over and have your mask really secure. So now I'm going to do another half double crochet. It's really, I, I mean, you could probably pinch there and do your next buttonhole and have them really close together, but I was having difficulty doing that with my fingers. So I put one of these pinch ones after. That's why I do that's why I wound up doing two stitches in between each buttonhole because that's just what my fingers were willing to do. If you want to tweak the design, go ahead. So I'm going up into the air again. It's the first stitch in the air and second stitch in the air. Pinch. And then this stitch is going to join, skip two, go to that one, pull through both of those bases. So there's three on there, and then do the half double crochet. And then Pinching it so that I got my loop so that I can go and make the next buttonhole. It's the base of the stitch that I just made. One. Two. And stitching it. I lost the yarn. Did I goof up there? I may have goofed up there. Yeah. Pinch. into this base of that stitch, pinch, one in the air, two in the air, stitch it together,
pinch. Do on the air. One in the air. That felt like it might have slipped a little bit. Yeah. Two in the air. Through both the bases. Half double crochet. Almost done. The little yarn ball is trying to escape anyway. Yes, I have the treat it as a first half double crochet t chain two there, but I actually don't really treat it as. I've been working around that just to make sure that that is really, really secure. So I'm stitching in there, but then to really make sure that that thing is secure in there, I've been, so it's ready, I'm ready to yarn over and pull through, but instead I'm going into that initial chain two the space between that and the first half double. I'm pulling the yarn from, oops, yarn split a little. Pulling the yarn there so that it's kind of incorporating it into the same stitch and then joining to the half double crochet. If I can get my fingers to work. And then just secure it by feeding the whole little thing through it. Make sure it doesn't stick on the button. Where are you? I think I did actually only go through around the button that time. Uh, I can't see what I'm doing through the screen very well. But I was just trying to slip the whole project through. The knot. So I can make the knot nice and tight. Yeah, it had gone around the button. That was the problem. So that's done and just needs to be cut off. Um, I, <laughs> my, yarn, my snips keep disappearing so I have these little baby nail clippers that I keep winding up using. And just clean it up and I can take my smaller crochet hook instead of digging for my darning needle um, if I can see what I'm doing if you draw to focus that would really help Eck. focus yeah I can't I don't know if I can see well enough to do this but Sometimes I just go through and trying to get that yarn tucked. Can't really see what I'm doing well enough. 
kind of watch myself through my hands through the screen but that's the whole completed one and yeah they're not exact you know it's I'm not a machine they're not exactly perfect I think I may use a different hook when I did that one um but there's some stretch to them they might get stretched out which is also why being able to shrink them down um, if you don't want the mask to be secure by putting the elastic here and wrapping the button around you can just shrink this up to the size that you actually need it by putting the buttons like let's say you really just need the the elastic on your mask is all stretched out so you really just need to have two buttons that are that far apart. You could just have that on your hair, on your head. You could clip it into your hair with some barrettes if you want to, and hook at the elastics onto the buttons to secure it, if that's what you need to do. So it's a quite versatile little thingy, and they're not too hard to make, and they're they don't take very long to make. So oh look, I can make a little smiley face. Yay! Yay! Happy, happy little hair th mask thingy. So, please make them for people. Um, and like I said, I'll be putting a link to the button pattern on Thingiverse into the video description, and this video will probably be in the button posting on Thingiverse so that people can find them back and forth. Uh, so, thanks for watching and thanks for helping people help the rest of us. Thanks.